Hi everyone, for maximum effect, please put on your headphones. Okay everyone, do not adjust your headphones. I know that what you're hearing may be a little nauseating, but that's just me taking advantage of some of the lesser known panning features in Cubase. And I'm gonna show you how to use them today. Let's do it. What's up everyone? We're back with another tutorial in Cubase today. I'm going to give you five tips about panning. Some things you probably did know, some things you probably didn't. Uh, but I'm doing it this way because I find that people respond better to numbered lists on the internet and I'm all about them clicks. So five tips to panning. Let's get into Cubase and let's do it. So in Cubase, you have two main panning and I am a sucker for left center right panning. I like things hard panned, especially if I'm gonna do a guitar, I like to double the guitars and then hard pan them and then have things like the lead vocal or the kick drum or the bass guitar all just be straight down the middle. So the way you would do that, of course, is you could record things in mono and you do them with the stereo balance panner, like you see here, uh, you know, just hard right, left and center. Now that's fine, but there are some times when that's just not gonna cut the mustard, uh, especially if you're recording a full drum set. With a drum set, a lot of times, what you wanna do is offset your hi-hat because it's so harsh, and there's two ways you can look at it. You can look at it from the perspective of if you are a drummer, and then from the perspective of if you are someone in the audience at a live show listening to drum sets. Now that's not the only two ways to do it, but those are the two ways I think about it. So let's say you are a drummer and you're sitting there at your drum set, okay? Well, your hi-hat's gonna be on your left and your first rack tom will be here, your second rack tom will be here, and your floor tom will be here. And that would be typically how I pan things if from the drummer's perspective. Now, if you're panning things from the audience perspective, you do it exactly the opposite. So your hi-hat is panned to the right, but not all the way. So I would do maybe 50 to the right. Um, and my toms would be, you know, 20, 20, and then maybe 30 or 40, uh, depending on how hard I wanted to pan my toms. I like to keep the drums mostly in the middle. I don't want too much, uh, you know, extraneous stuff out on the sides because that's where I like to have my melodic instruments, especially if they're doubled. I like to hard pan them all the way out to the sides. But that way, not everything is charging straight down the middle. There's some room in the middle for the kick drum, which is basically the heartbeat of the song. And there's some room in the middle for a lead vocal and a bass guitar. And sometimes I'll even offset the snare a little bit. But that's just general panning. I typically go left, right, center, unless I'm dealing with hi-hats, snares, and toms, in which case I'll give them a little bit of stereo width. But of course, all of this is assuming that you're panning mono tracks. Now, if you're working with stereo tracks, you can also do a stereo combined panner here in the Cubase mixer. Uh, and you do that by clicking this little carrot arrow thing. Let me, I don't think that that came through. So the stereo balance panner just gives you like a one way ticket to change things. The stereo combined panner allows you to sort of define a range within which you wish the panning to exist. Now I love this type of panning, especially when I'm composing for strings, because if you listen to an orchestra or if you ever go see a symphony orchestra, you'll see that the violins are on the left stage right, uh, but the audience is left. And then the violas, and uh, then the cellos and the basses. So it sort of goes uh, high frequencies to low frequencies in terms of where the orchestra sits in an orchestral setting. So I like to pan it that way because it sort of reminds you of being at the symphony, a night at the symphony. Uh, and that's the reason why I don't pan from the drummer's perspective either. I always pan from the audience's perspective where the hi-hat will be on the right and the toms go high to low, right to left, because I like to think of it more as more people will have the experience of being an audience member than they will of playing a drum set. Now, I know that if you're a drummer, you're more likely to do it the other way because that's the way that you've always heard it. But I think that it doesn't really matter. Most of the time, people won't even notice. I mean, right now I'm wearing my headphones the right way, but half the time I put them on with the left ear and the right ear, and it doesn't really make that much of a difference unless you have, I don't know, hearing loss in an ear or something. Um, so... I guess th that's the first two tips. The first tip is, you know, you can do hard left, center, right panning. The second tip is when you're dealing with drum sets, sort of think about how you want to pan it, like either from the drummer's perspective or the audience's perspective. The third tip is you can use this straight L or RC, or you can use the stereo combined panner, which allows you to define a range in Cubase and have it panned within that range. 
And then we're gonna get into the fun stuff that you heard at the top of the video. Some interesting panning techniques that exist in Cubase. And these are the things that you're going to use more for an effect than anything else. And I think that this would be more of a post-producer's jam, like if they're producing in 5.1, um, if they're doing mix downs for sound design. And I'm more of a composer, uh, songwriter, producer than a sound designer, but uh, there's a plugin in here that you heard at the top and we'll have it read the automation. So what you heard at the top of the video was this VST multi-panner. And for these things to work, you really have to have, you know, uh, your audio track, which is audio one. Of course, I'm using poor practices and not labeling my tracks, but audio one is the one that's using this VST multi-panner. And you can create crazy effects, spatial effects, like the one I did at the top of the video. We can go ahead and listen to it. Okay, everyone, do not adjust your headphones. I know that what you're hearing may be a little nauseating, but that's just me taking advantage of some of the lesser known panning features in Cubase. And I'm gonna show you how to use them today. Let's so this is the VST multi-panner. What it does is it sort of gives you four axis panning. Uh, you can move your X and Y around sort of independently of each other. Um, you can do front and rear or front and rear. Uh, and so this is an interesting one to check out, especially if you're using like a 5.1 workflow or you're mixing in quad stereo or something. It's definitely the kitchen sink of Cubase panners. If you want a panning plugin that can do anything that you can possibly think of in terms of panning, this is the one you should turn to. And so this is tip number four, the VST multi-panner. It is, of course, uh, sort of like the omni-panner. It'll do any panning trick you want within Cubase, and you can automate all the parameters. I sort of just, when I, I just cut this part of the track from the video, and then I just started turning dials. Okay, everyone, do not adjust your headphones. I know that what you're hearing may be a little nausea. So that was how I achieved the effect at the beginning of the video. And this one, I'm not sure. You would use it more in a sound design capacity, but I could see some uses perhaps for, uh, for music if you wanted to use this as an effect. You, you know you can get in here and get a lot of stuff done with this particular plugin in terms of panning. But the VST multi-panner, that's something that you're gonna need to sort of play around with and learn all the ins and outs of. Uh, and especially if you're a sound designer or you're mixing dialogue, doing dialogue editing, that this will come in handy, the VST multi-panner, I'm sure. Now the other plugin I wanna show you that comes included with Cubase is here on this Halion Sonic instance. So the auto panner is dope. It gives you uh, crazy uh, panning effects. If you want to have crazy panning effects, you can adjust the width and make it much more subtle, but you can hear it here. This is a uh, sort of how it tracks from left to center to right. And you could do it as a sine wave, triangle wave the, uh, or square wave. But... And the wider the width is, the less subtle the effect will be because it's actually maxing out, um, you know, far right. So you'll have nothing in your ear. So. or you can lower the width and it'll be more of a subtle wishy-washy auto pan. And then of course, smoothness makes uh, the individual guide points that you put on the auto pan less dramatic. So. And so the auto panner is a fantastic tool to keep in your arsenal to, to remind yourself of because by adjusting the width and the smooth factors, you can get some crazy cool sort of modulation type effects using panning. And it's always good to have extra sound design and uh, little modulation type effects uh, in your brain for when you're sort of producing that latest banger and you need something cool sounding. So don't sleep on auto pan because it's dope. 
Uh, and those are my five tips. You know, you have your regular panning, you have left, center, right panning, you can pan a drum set as you would hear it from an audience perspective or a string section as you'd hear it from an audio perspective. You can use normal panning, which I believe they call stereo balance pan, or that's how I think of panning. Or you can use stereo combined panning to produce a range. Those are tips two and three. Tip number four is that Cubase includes a plugin called the VST multi-panner. And this is sort of like the omni panning option that you have in Cubase, where if you want sort of front, rear, um, the ability to do things on an axis, this is the uh, plugin that you want in terms of panning. And then of course, finally, there's a new plugin, the auto panner, which allows you to define ranges and rates and widths and smoothness and sort of get these crazy modulation types of effects that are achieved with panning. So these have been five quick tips about panning in Cubase. I hope you all have found this helpful. If you have, feel free to like or subscribe and take care of yourselves, everyone. Peace.